Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyle Suggs and this is Informal. This is my vlog where I talk about a few things that are on my mind. And um, I'm hoping all of you had a really, really wonderful weekend. Hope Monday wasn't too bad for you. Over here on the East Coast, it was raining all weekend. And today, it just broke a little bit. And the weather is getting to be a little bit more chilly. Hopefully, we can get a little warmer as we go to the weekend. But, um, you know, I basically came back from Maryland. I did a video with a buddy of mine. He's a law enforcement officer. Came back. I did a quick video last night on informal it's my first time doing it it's my vlog where i can kind of say what i want with limited production kind of get it out quicker and i did a post on monica rambeau in that particular episode and for those who missed that i'll leave a comment or i'll, I'll leave a link down below with that particular video monica Lamb uh, rambeau was a avenger basically took over for uh, Captain Marvel, who was killed off by Marvel because they were trying to keep the rights to that character. But long story short, she became the first black female Captain Marvel and the first black female Avenger. And so I got a comment yesterday, and that comment was this right here. So the video talk says this. I give my dis I give my uh, I give my commentary about how Brie Larson is this woman who is trying to speak out on behest of Black America as if she's the savior as such, but at the same time doesn't recognize or want to talk about the fact that the original character that she's playing was actually a Black woman. Again, not that this matters. It's not really that important. But the irony is, is pretty compelling. So anyway, I posted this out there. And this post here, this gentleman says, see you guys at Marvel with a cup of coffee and something else in there. Implying that, that um, dismissing my comment, pretty much just saying, you know what, your opinion doesn't matter. We're going to go anyway. And that's great. I absolutely have no problem with that. I'm reading into this, but... I've heard this argument before. I want to just bring it out real quickly. And the argument is this, is that every argument that you hear for people who are against people like me who dare to have a problem with Brie Larson's comments or have a problem with Marvel's woke culture creeping into the MCU. Star Wars always had it happen to them. So suddenly, if people like me do that, all of a sudden, there's a problem. You know, we get called racist, we get called sexist, homophobic, and no matter what happens, no matter what that issue is that we have, it could be for the fact that I don't have enough money to go to the movie theater. I'm not going because I can't afford it. And they don't know that, but they're going to assume, because it's Captain Marvel, because this movie has been set aside as the feminist movie that's going to put a f flag in the ground of feminism forever that there was never a female-led character in the history of the world until now so if it doesn't work out here then you are obviously um, a hater and you are a problem that's what I have and every time you see arguments against people like me nothing they never address the issue of why I don't want to go see it. It's always projecting their negativity or their perspective or their agenda to suppress our views and to get us to be quiet. I'll get more on that a little later, but that's what you're seeing. And there is no credible argument to come out against us because this is still a free country. You saw what Rotten Tomatoes did. They basically took the score away because they couldn't deal with the fact that people were actually thinking for themselves and making it known on the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, of which they took down. I'll cover that again a little bit later as well. So I'm not going to talk much more about this, but that's my thought when I saw that. And just look at when you see any criticism against you. 
I guarantee you it's going to fall in that category where they don't recognize or acknowledge why your real reason for not wanting to go is. They can never address it because you have the truth and they're trying to distance that truth or try and deflect to something that they're trying to push, which is their narrative, their argument, or their ignorance, or their naivety, wherever it is, they're not addressing the core issue. Okay? Cool. Let's go to the next point. My next point, and this is something that you probably, most of you guys really don't care about. I was hesitant to even bring it up, but because this site deals with movie reviews, I want to talk about it because it may have implications down the road. In fact, it absolutely will have Im in the implications down the road. And that is Steven Spielberg versus Netflix. Now, if you've been paying attention to the news or Twitter or whatever, you would have seen that Steven Spielberg, the director, famous director, we all know who he is, got into a Twitter battle with Netflix. And let me pull up an article here from Variety. It says that uh, Netflix responds to Steven Spielberg's push to bar it from the Oscars. And so essentially what's going on here is Spielberg is concerned that the distribution of Netflix is going to hurt the industry distribution wise for movies. Now, when a movie is made, you have to have two things. You have to have a, you have to have a, um, production company, or a company that will actually make it, who owns those rights, and you have to have a company that would distribute it. Two separate entities. Sometimes it's the same thing, but the distributor and the producer um, are totally separate entities, but they could be one and the same again. But as far as distribution rights, Spielberg is concerned that because Netflix is primarily on TV, that they should fall under the category as made for TV distribution, which is totally separate. And so what's happening is there's a rule. And so since he's on the board, he is on the Academy of Sciences. He wants to include, he's on the board of governors of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Art and Sciences. He wants to propose a rule change to allow them to disqualify streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon, and so forth. Netflix's Roma won four Oscars this year, including Best Director. Yeah, I wonder if there's any interest in there on his part. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, it is different. But the rule right now is that if a movie airs, I believe on the East Coast and or the West Coast, I believe, prior to the, you know, in, within that calendar year, up till December 31st at midnight, it can be considered for an Oscar. And so Spielberg wants a rule change. Now, there are people who are saying, no, Netflix doesn't want to, um, Netflix is trying to corner the market. And so Netflix came up with this uh, tweet. It says, we love cinema. Here are some things we also love. Access for people who can't always afford or live in towns without theaters. Letting everyone everywhere enjoy releases at the same time and giving filmmakers more ways to share art. These things are not mutually exclusive. So Netflix is throwing the gauntlet down saying, you know what, we have the right to do this and so forth. Spielberg is saying because this is not a real medium that is necessarily in the theater, widespread, that this could, I think what he's saying is it could ultimately hurt the going to the movie theater experience. And I want to read a comment here. I, I, I'm not taking a position either way on this. I don't know. I'm, I sort of see both sides. But I'm going to read this comment right here. And he's kind of leaning on the Netflix side. And he kind of infers some things or projects some things on Netflix. But I'm not totally, totally true. I'm not, I'm not sure, totally sure if it's true or not. He says, I see both points of view from Spielberg and Netflix. It's clear Spielberg sees these Netflix productions as made-for-TV films. Therefore, this is what he says disqualifies them. 
Okay, fair enough, but I think that point of view is short-sighted. Netflix sees the demise of the movie theaters as imminent. They know the typical movie goer is sick and tired of paying $50 just for two people to see a flick and get some popcorn. The big wig directors like Spielberg have been taking advantage. They have big budget films and dish out lousy remakes, sequels, superhero films, all with extraordinary overpaid actors. He goes on, he's kind of spewing here. He basically says that Hollywood did this to themselves. Um, he mentions greed, whatever. And then Netflix came out swinging and caught them off guard. So is Netflix a competitive advantage because of their ability to see the market and take advantage? Because they've invested a lot of money to be in this position. So that's there. there's that. And then Spielberg is maybe saying, you know what, this is not fair. They have unfair advantage. And so movie theaters and so forth. So I think he has a really good point here. I don't think they saw this coming. And they're going to have to make some rule changes, especially on the short term, because this could really hurt the film. Um, there's a statistic. I don't have the actual quote, but this came from Collider that Perry Nimrov quoted this today on Collider, I believe, saying that, and I've heard this before, that the average person, the average person in America goes to the movies only four times per year. And last year was a big year, but people are only going to see the big ticket items. Some of the smaller items or pictures aren't being seen. You're not seeing any more of the independent films being massively put out anymore. It's either, if it's, a, if it's an independent film, it's typically a horror film, because they can be a low budget and still carry a big uh, distribution and widespread audience. Or you have the big major films. You know, the, the, the Star Wars, the Avengers, and so forth. And so that's what we're seeing now. And the only time you're really getting to see artsy films is right around Oscar time. And uh, so that's probably one of the reasons why I'm doing reviews, just so I can kind of keep up with those and kind of... Because those typically tend to be a little bit you know, in the fray, I want to talk about that from a social, from a social standpoint. But anyway, that's, I'm kind of rambling here, but that's kind of my thought there. And that's something to uh, think about. And it will have some major, major impact on the way we see and view movies going forward. And this should be interesting to watch. Okay, so, so, the next thing I want to talk about is Kevin's Corner. It's a YouTuber, African American, had a a video that came out a few hours ago, and I watched it, and it got me thinking. And his channel is political. This channel is not really political. It's not. Uh, we're not going to talk about a lot of hardcore policy issues here on this channel, but. You can't escape it nowadays because of the way the culture is being divided. And I think this Captain Marvel issue goes well beyond Captain Marvel, which is why I think so many people are talking about it. Because you can take out Captain Marvel and Brie Larson and this whole social justice warrior initiative. And you can swap out something else. Pick an issue. Swap it in there and take two sides. The side that was pushing the issue and one side that's resisting the issue. And if you do apples, apples and apples, the same people who would be pushing Captain Marvel, if you make it so that whatever argument you put in there are those same people on that side of the argument, it fits right in. Because what, you, what you'll see is, and what, he, and what Kevin talked about, and I'm borrowing this uh, thought process here, is that uh, it's for control. And it's for, it's for making people believe certain things so that they can get certain things accomplished in terms of agenda. And I'll give you a pragmatic example of that, of that in a second here. And so like I was saying before, this is not a political channel. Um, but we have to understand that there are agendas at play. And... When you have agendas in play that are construed around things that aren't necessarily true, the only way to combat that is to actually 
speak the truth. But if there's somebody who's pushing that and the truth is getting in the way, well, what happens? I would predict you'd see stuff like shutting down a Twitter account. I would predict you'd see things like changing algorithms on certain websites. I would see demonetizing videos. I would see, you know, standing in hallways, blocking people from entering. I would see all kinds of things happening. I would see websites that rate movie reviews turning them off so that nobody can comment on them. Like that would ever happen, right? And so that's what I'm trying to get at. And that's what I'm saying that when you have a CEO of a company who also owns Rotten Tomatoes, we're talking about the CEO of Fandango, Rotten Tomatoes, and you see a movie that's been pushed so hard by a major studio with a core agenda behind it, a core social justice warrior agenda behind it. And they've said this. They've said this is a feminist movie. And when you see popular opinion on a major website, on the biggest re movie review website, come down from a 96% to a 27%, you find it very interesting when that said CEO also happened to be an executive for 12 years of the company that's making it. He was an executive at Disney. And so you want to say conspiracies all you want, but at the end of the day, it's about money, it's about power, it's about control. And I'm not going to be pushing a lot of conspiracies on, the, on this channel. But you, we have to think for ourselves and understand. And it doesn't negate the fact, regardless of whatever happens here, it doesn't, they need to, it does not negate the fact that we have the right to our opinion. Who cares what Rotten Tomatoes does? Or who cares what anybody else does? The fact of the matter is we should be allowed to say what we want to say. I'm not saying on their website. I'm just saying, but... To say that and then have that opinion and not be ridiculed for something that's our opinion. Um, that's, that's what I'm getting at. And I think there's, there's bigger things at play and I just think that people should recognize that and call it for what it is. So if you see a line of argument going down the path, always bring it back to the core issue at hand and why the opposition is actually upset. In this Captain Marvel case, it's because we don't like the fact that a movie studio is taking a franchise, potentially, in a direction that we don't like because of whatever reasons, that when we talk about that and make a, uh, a statement about that, or we call them out about that, and we're mad about that, and we let other people know that we're mad about that, that all of a sudden we're attacked just for exercising our constitutional and human right to do so. And that's it. So with that, I'm going to get way out that soapbox. I'm done. I hope that makes sense. But this is going to lead into this is going to lead into what this channel is all about. That's kind of why I did all this because yesterday I didn't I, you know, I've been putting videos up with uh, interviews with policemen Medal of Honor winner. Um, we did a video on a, a, a small documentary on the Medal of Honor winner, the first African American to win the Medal of Honor, and that was done for a reason. If you look at the data that being posted, and you look at what's going on in the news at the time, you'll know why we posted it then. That was not a coincidence. Why we posted that particular, that particular um, documentary, that five minute documentary. You'll see movie reviews that have a, a conservative take to them. And you'll see discussions like, like this. And you wonder, what is this channel about? What is, what is our motive? What is our, what is our mission? I'm going to share that with you right now. I'm going to do a more official video on that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and read the, our mission statement here. This is on our About page on YouTube. You can, you can go check it out yourself. And I'm going to read it right here 
for you. And then we'll close this, we'll close this, uh, this informal session out. I say, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyle Suggs and I am a God-fearing, devoted husband father. This channel hopes to take in the divisive and toxic culture of today and filter it through a no-spin lens of logic, reason, and sanity with a flavor of sarcasm. We do not take ourselves too seriously as we simply want to create and enjoy great creative content and to have fun while doing it. Allowing people to think critically by presenting information in a larger context is one of our core missions for this site. This includes, but is not limited to, our input in the areas of TV reviews, movie reviews, sports, civic awareness, historical context, pop culture, and yes, even at times, political drama. We are not a political channel, nor will we endorse any candidates. However, we will not shy away from stating hardcore facts whenever relative. And that's really important. You know, we're not going to be pushing political messages per se, but some, sometimes you just have to say it is, you have to, sometimes you have to say things the way it is and what it is. And you can't be afraid to hurt somebody's feelings if it's the truth. If there's anything you, we, you can, uh, anything we can do to improve this channel, let us know and, um, and you know, continue being awesome. I think you guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys taking your time to listen to this or watch this. And if you like this content and where we're going with this, I really appreciate it if you were to like and share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, send me some feedback below. I love constructive criticism. I want to improve, make this thing better, as professional as possible, but also as efficient as possible. And so the quicker I put things out, the quality tends to go down a little bit. The longer it takes for me to put things up, the quality tends to go up. So I'm going to try and be marrying those types of things. This will be a lesser quality, but a quicker um, cycle time. And some of my other ones, like my Medal of Honor series, I'm going to do several of those. Hopefully we will be launching in the summer around Memorial Day and around Independence Day and that sort of thing, uh, Veterans Day. And those would be a little more high-end productions, but we'll have more time to work on them. And then we'll have, of course, the movie reviews, which are pretty much cookie cutter. I can kind of whip, whip those out pretty quickly, but I got to go see the movie. I got to do all that, and that takes time and money and effort. So we'll see with that as well. But I'm going to try and do movies that I think is going to be important to us. Movies like you know anything that Dinesh D'Souza comes out with, any faith-based movie, any movie that's controversial, that's that may be on a, you know, that people would be hesitant on this channel to actually watch. I'll go watch it and then come back to you and let you know. So there's going to be a mixture there going in there. So hopefully I'll get enough content out there and it'll be, it'll be enough for people to, to, um, to digest and, and deal with and understand the focus of this channel. It's not necessarily the content. It's what's filtering through the content to, um, to, to go back out is the important thing. All right, so with that, I hope you guys have a great evening, and I really enjoyed this. And until next time, I may do this again tonight, um, tomorrow night. I'm not sure, but I'll see what happens. But um, look for a few more movie reviews to come out. And, um, yeah, so that's it. So, um, as always, you guys continue to be awesome, and I'll check you out next time.